Good afternoon, how are you? Life's a beach here at Children's BBC. Only 80 shopping days to Christmas from tomorrow, by the way. Just thought we'd keep reminding you of that one. Oh, oh, something happening today. It's Michael Faraday's birthday today. Now, if he was still alive, he would be 196 years old. Michael Faraday is the man who tinkered about with things and sort of discovered electricity. So really, he's the one to blame for children's BBC. Shocking, I call it. Ooh, dear. Terribly, terribly sorry about that. We'll try and improve it. Now then, word for the day. This one comes from Janet Thompson, who says, I just thought I'd write to tell you that the word of the moment, if something is really good, it's spiffy ding, she says. And she says, P.S. I'm 27. I mean, I'm in the right place, aren't I? This is children's BBC, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. Thank you, Janet. Right, what's on this afternoon? We've Henry's cat in a minute, which is called Out for the Count. There's Sebastian, the incredible drawing dog. Dudley Do-Right at 4.15 has a coming out party. We've Beat the Teacher, part two of Bad Boys at 4.35. News round at 5 o'clock, and then at 10 past 5, Keith Chegwin checks out holidays. Henry's cat. Henry's. Now. Henry's. Now. You must know Henry's cat. Now. You must have seen the movie. You must have read the book. He's a mellow yellow feline, so take a second look. He knows everything about nothing, and not too much about that. So if you know someone who knows what he knows, then you must know Henry's cat. Today was the day of the great bubble gum blowing contest. Henry's cat faced his opponent. A long standing score was about to be settled. Chris Rabbit in the opposite corner looked confident. Mosey Mouse, the referee, made an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the big bubblegum blowing challenge match between, in the blue corner, Chris Rabbit, bubblegum blowing champion of the world. And the challenger in the yellow corner, Henry's Cat. You have one piece of bubble gum each and three blows. I want good clean bubbles and no blows below the belt. Chris Rabbit and Henry's cat chewed very hard. Then they came out of their corners and blew. The first round goes to the champion, Chris Hot Lips Rabbit. <laughs> Henry's cat had lost the first round. He chewed his gum slowly and deliberately. He had a plan. When Chris Rabbit started to blow, Henry's cat pretended he was about to sneeze. Of course, Chris Rabbit stopped blowing when he saw this. Henry's cat quickly blew a very big bubble indeed and took the second round. He cheated! He cheated! cried Chris Rabbit. He pretended he was going to sneeze and put me off! Eh, there's no rules against sneezing. It's one round each, and this is the final and deciding round, said Mosey Mouse. Both contestants were chewing fast. Well, they blew, and they blew, and they blew! Their bubbles were enormous, but at that moment, the wind also decided to blow. And they drifted up into the sky like two balloons and sailed away. Then, with two loud pops, their bubbles burst. Now it was not a case of who had won, but who was lost. They both were. Oh dear, what are we going to do now? Said Henry's cat. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Rabbits are good at finding their way, said Chris. Putting his ear to the ground and turning the other ear to pick up sounds. Oh, have you found something? Said Henry's cat. Yeah, yeah, I've got a pine cone stuck in my ear. But there's no need to stare said Chris. Ow! 
Look over there, said Henry's cat. There in front of them was a large, dark, spooky-looking castle. Well, when you are lost and far from home, any home looks welcome. So they rang the bell. Ow, said Henry's cat. Let's come back some other time. But then the door slowly opened. They were wondering what to do next when... The door slammed behind them! It was very creepy. They heard footsteps approaching. Ah, good evening, my friends. Welcome to my humble abode. <laughs> It is not a good night for the travel, no? Perhaps you will care to join me. I was just about to partake of dinner. Well, Henry's cat and Chris Rabbit couldn't agree more, especially when they saw all that food. But first, let me introduce myself. I am the Count Rambaba of Paranoia. It is sometimes lonely in this great castle. So pleased to be my guest for the night, huh? Oh, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. I'm Henry's cat, and this is my friend Chris Rabbit, the champion bubblegum blower of the world. And I am the runner-up. Then it is a great honor to have such distinguished guests. Pleased to be seated. <laughs> well, Henry's cat could hardly wait. He was just about to bite a large jam donut when a vampire bat fluttered down and sank its fangs into the donut and sucked all the strawberry jam out. <laughs> Don't be afraid. It is just my little friend, Riga Mortis. Well, Henry's cat had hardly got over that shock when a bony hand came out of the custard and snatched away a cherry cake he was about to eat. Then, when Henry's cat tried to take another cherry cake, it just scurried away and hid behind the butter dish. Henry's cat tried to chase it out with a stick of celery, but only succeeded in knocking over the pepper pot. <laughs> I think we have had enough amusement for one evening, my friends. Allow me to conduct you to your bedroom. The bed was a welcome sight, but the room was old and musty and hadn't been slept in for years. They hoped they would soon fall asleep. Ow, oh, I know, said Henry's cat. Let's have a sleep race and see who drops off quickest. One, two, three, go. But sleep was out of the question. They seemed to see lots of horrible faces floating around in the dark. Oh dear, said Henry's cat. I think this castle is haunted. What shall we do? Oh, oh no, oh no, said Chris Rabbit. Let, let's hide under the sheets. But in the dark, Chris Rabbit fell out of bed and got all tangled up in the sheet. Henry's cat poked his head out to see where Chris had gone, just as Chris stood up. Ah! Well, Henry's cat made for the door. The wrong door, as it happened. Henry's cat rubbed his head. At least the ghost had gone, but his relief was short-lived. He found himself in a room full of strange machinery and Count Rumbaba. Ah, <laughs> hello, my little yellow friend. You are up early for breakfast. May I be allowed to entertain? you for a short while. Please be seated while I fix you a little drink, huh? Henry's cat was still dazed from his fall. He couldn't think straight. He sat down in the chair. As quick as a flash, the Count pressed a button. And Henry's cat was secured so that he couldn't move. Well, 
well. Curiosity killed the cat, as they say. You will now see why I have the castle deep in the forest, away from the prying eyes. You have come just in time for the great experiment. Ah, but forgive me, I almost forgot. I offered you a little drink. Ah, there, my friend. Has that made you feel better? But Henry's cat felt far from better. <gasps> oh dear, you have given me very bad hiccups. <gasps> Hiccup, Henry's cat. Ah, so sorry. Please permit me to cure them for you. I have just the thing here. Well, Henry's cat got such a fright, it immediately cured his hiccups. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! My little experiment worked. It will make me the fortune. You would like to know what I am up to, huh? Well, I will spill the beans, as they say. Here we have the Mexican jumping beans. And what do I do with the beans? I show you. First, I make them into powder. Then, I boil the water so the powder goes around and around and... It comes out here. And here we have the bean juice. And beans means money. <laughs> Henry's cat realized he and Chris Rabbit had stumbled on a fiendish plan by a mad genius. And here he was, helpless. Ah, but I am forgetting my manners. You must be feeling lonely, huh? Perhaps you would like your little friend to join you. What's going on? cried Chris Rabbit. Ha <laughs> ha, my little furry friend. You are about to find out. Here is a little drink for you. Henry's cat saw what was about to happen and shouted, Ow! Oh, don't drink it, Chris. Don't drink it. If you do not drink it, I will have to do something unpleasant to your friend. And you would not like that, huh? But Chris Rabbit was not called Hot Lips for nothing. He had been chewing some bubble gum to keep his nerves steady. He quickly blew a very large bubble. Count Rumbaba gaped with amazement. The bubble burst and knocked the drink back into his open mouth. He was getting a taste of his own medicine. Henry's cat saw his opportunity and shot his chair over to Chris Rabbit, who quickly released him. But Count Rumbaba, who couldn't see where he was going, accidentally knocked the lever that switched on the monster machine. The monster sat up. It was not in a very good mood. It had been programmed to frighten people with hiccups. So when it saw Count Rumbaba with hiccups, it knew what it had to do. The monster shook the Count so hard, his keys fell out. Henry's cat snatched them and released Chris Rabbit. Of course, the monster soon frightened the hiccups out of Count Rumbaba and put him in the rubbish bin. Then he went off to look for more hiccupping people. Henry's cat and Chris Rabbit put Count Rumbaba in his own cage. I suppose we could say he was out for the count, said Henry's cat. Ha <laughs> ha! Here, come and have a look at this lot over here said Chris Rabbit. They found lots of food and drink made from jumping beans. They also unearthed the secret plans of the evil Count. Everybody knows that fright will cure hiccups. He intended to sell so much hiccup food that everyone would get hiccups. No one would be able to work or talk properly and the world would soon come to a standstill. Good evening. Due to the outbreak of hiccups, the Prime Minister has called a national emergency. Count Rumbaba then planned to open a hiccup cure centre. Customers would be charged $10 a cure. They would be told to stand in front of a cupboard. The 
patient would be cured of hiccups instantly, and Count Rumbaba would become rich and famous. However, his evil plan had been frustrated thanks to bravery and bubblegum. Henry's cat and Chris Rabbit were both given chocolate medals, which they could eat there or take away. And they were seen on TV blowing bubble gum in different shapes and colors. Count Rumbaba was sent to jail for life again, and that included lunch breaks and holidays. Henry's cat summed it all up by saying, Ah, oh, well. He may have been a count, but his number's up now. Henry, now. Henry, now. you must know Henry's cat. Now. You must have seen the movie. You must have read the book. He's a mellow yellow feline, so take a second look. He knows everything about nothing. And not too much about that So if you know someone who knows what he knows Then you must know Henry's cat Then you must know Henry's cat Right, bubblegum